Hey, my name is Ryan Langwish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth for game designers. Um, and today I'm going to be continuing in my series of tutorials on Tabletop Simulator and prototyping in Tabletop Simulator. I'm talking specifically about using states in um, Tabletop Simulator, which is essentially a way to have components that can quickly on the fly change into different versions of the components. So this is obviously something that isn't possible at the physical game table, you know, to snap your fingers and have a component change into another component. But you can imagine instances where maybe, you know, you upgrade a component and you're replacing that with a different version of it, or maybe there's things that flip. So there's a front side, and when you do something, you get to flip to the other side. You could implement it that way in Tabletop Simulator and have, have things flip. Um, but it can be even a little bit easier to play in the Tabletop Simulator environment if you utilize states to just allow it to be kind of a hot swap of the image or the component. Um, so let's walk through kind of just some good things to know about um, how to use states um, and some of the gotchas to, to watch out for. So let's say that we had just a few components here. So I'm just going to bring out my good friends, the basic colored blocks. Um, and let's have three of them here. And suppose that I wanted to have, you know, a component that could switch between these three versions of my component. What I would want to do is first, just like I've done here, arrange them in a line specifically in the order that I would want the states to be. So if it ha was important, the ordering of the, the states, you would want to line them up in that order. And the reason that's important is because you're going to then highlight them using just dragging a box here. And the order that you highlight the blocks or the, the components is going to be the order that it's going to assign the states. So you just want to line them up in whatever order you're looking for. Once I have them all selected, I'm going to right click specifically on the component that I want to be first. So if I right clicked on this green one, for example, and created the states from there, it would put the green block as the first state and then do it in the selection order. So it'd be red followed by blue. In this case, since I lined them up in the order that I wanted, I'm gonna right click the red block and I'm gonna go down to this option that says create states. It says combine all selected objects into a single object. So when I click this, notice these disappear and I just have a red block now. And that red block now says one out of three over it and kind of has the icon um, that shows that it's using the states. And what I can do now is I can right click it and go to state. And if I click one of these other options, like two or three, it's going to just hot swap into that version of the component. Um, additionally, you can come in here in the menu and do it this way. But the quicker way is if you just hover over the component, you can actually use just the number keys um, to hot swap. So if I hit two, it's going to go to state two or one. So, you know, I can go through them very quickly by just hitting the numbers that I want to do, which can be, you know, much quicker than switching out components or doing other ways to kind of get to that new component. Now you'll notice when I, you know, came in here and looked at the states, I kind of would have to remember that, you know, blue was the second one and green was the third one. Um, if I wanted to do it a little bit better, and let me, I'll just start from scratch here. Um, so if I pull these out here again, really what you probably want to do is ahead of time label these components. Um, and I actually have a video that goes a little bit into kind of labeling components in general, but at the very basic, you can assign a name to a component. So I could call this red block, um, blue block, and green triangle. And so now if I do the same thing, right, I highlight them and I right click the one I want to be first, create states. Now when I hover, I get the name of the component, which is the same as when they, when they were separate once I assigned that name. But now when I go into the state here, I actually get that hover name for each of these options too. So that could be pretty useful. Like if you had a lot of options or just, you know, even if you don't have very many, it's nice to be able to just have it tell you, you know, state three is the green triangle. I don't have to, I don't have to necessarily remember that. Um, so when might you use this? So one, one common um, 
example is maybe you have like a double-sided board. Maybe you have a board that, you know, use this side of the board if you're playing with one or two players and flip it for three or four players. Rather than having to flip an entire board and tabletop simulator, just import the two boards, create, combine them into an object with two states, and then you can just very quickly switch between the two sides of the board without messing with anything. Um, also, and this is something that came up in some of my prototypes, was um, just double-sided tiles. You can think of um, games that have like tile, map tiles or things like that that are maybe double-sided to add more variety. Um, you could import them and make it double-sided, specifically if they were um, like rectangular tiles, because you could then use the um, custom tile import for that. But it gets a little bit weird if you're wanting to do it with something that's irregular. So for example, I had a game that used, it had a hexagonal grid. And so I had tiles that, you know, are cut out like hexagons. And a tile um, component in Tabletop Simulator can't um, cut out irregular shapes. If you want irregular shapes, you need to be using a token. Because a token will actually take the transparency of like a PNG file into account. Um, but there's some limitations with tokens as well. So for example, let's say I import a token here. So let's pull this token out. And I'm going to import this just blossom one image. I'm just going to do it locally for now. Um, it's going to load up here. Slowly but surely. Okay, that took longer than normal. Um, let's make this a little bigger. And so when I import a token like this, you can see that it, it cut it out, the irregular shape, like I want it to. However, it only gave me one option for an image, and the backside is simply the mirrored version of that image. And that's just a limitation that Tabletop Simulator has on tokens. So if I wanted a shape like this to be double-sided, as far as I know, Tabletop Simulator doesn't really provide a way natively to make that possible. So the workaround um, would be, well, let's use states instead. Instead of like worrying about flipping it, what if we just have two different versions of it that we combine and then we can flip between the states? So let me pull out um, another token and I'm gonna import the second Blossom image here. Still local. Um, we'll see. My computer must be thinking hard. It's taking much longer to load these than normal. Um, but once I have these two, and you know, ideally I would have probably sized these together um, to make sure they're exactly the same size. Um, but once I have both of them, I can now combine these states. Now I'm gonna quick make copies of this for um, what I'm gonna wanna mention afterwards. But let's just see what this would look like. If I, if I grab these two, so I do them in the order that I want them to be, which is pretty trivial at this, with just two of them. Right click the first one and I'm gonna create states. And now, you know, it's one of two states and I can use the, the numbers to switch between them, like this. Now, when I'm doing this, it's really nice and it's, you know, switching to it dynamically. However, the only reason it's not l loading the image again is because these tiles are out here. So suppose I um, didn't have this one. If I switch back to this one, which matches here, but then I switch back here, you'll notice it loads again as if I'm loading it into the game for the first time. And so this is something you just kind of have to know about how Tabletop Simulator works with its imported graphics is it's only going to keep an image in memory as long as it's present on the table. And if it's gone, it's going to dump it from memory, and the first time that it comes back, it's going to have to load it again. Now, that's a little bit annoying, right? Like, if I'm switching between these, and if I didn't have this out here, it would be doing on both of those states. It would be going to this black square, and I would have to wait. And maybe that's not a huge deal. Like if it was something like you're changing the board, you're probably going to do it once at the beginning of the game. It's done. That's fine. But if it's something during the game, that might be a little bit um, annoying if it's something you're doing often. So the only workaround I really know of is have another version of the component that's always out on the table, right? Like if I keep this somewhere on the table and I have the other one as well, I would be able to switch between them without any loading simply because they're always kept in memory. 
kind of a clunky way to handle it. And, you know, if, if you're aware of any better ways to handle that, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Um, but that is one workaround I'm aware of that you could um, kind of force it to be keeping that image in memory so that switching between the states doesn't have this kind of loading time. And that's pretty much it with states. I mean, it's really just, you know, line them up, select them all. Um, ideally, give them names so that the, the picking of states is a little clearer. Um, but it's pretty quick and easy, and it, it can be pretty versatile how you use it. You can use it to simulate something that would be in a physical game of some components that need to be switched out. Or you can use it for something that, you know, it isn't simulating how the physical game would actually play, but it's just making the tabletop simulator experience smoother. Um, which I'm always a big fan of because it's already things about playing games in tabletop simulator is going to be um, more difficult for people than if they were sitting around the table. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful um, and I will see you in the next video.